In this video, I'm going to give you 10 steps to starting a business online. And it's not what you think it is. Not even close. Hey, what's going on? My name is Glendon Cameron, founder of HustlersKungFu.com. But before we get into all of that, I've got something for you. I think everybody needs to learn how to sell. I think everyone needs to learn how to hustle. So with that, I have not one, but 14 free courses for you at HustlersKungFu.com. Go below, hit the link, get your courses, and start learning how to make money today. I know this is going to sound somewhat counterintuitive, but before you start selling online, I want you to sell locally. I know, I know, I know. You're like, hey, I want to sell online. I don't want to deal with people. I just want to make that money and I want to automate the system. And I started to think about that with uh, some of my clients and customers that I've had over the years. Everyone that has done really, really well started off with a physical product. Every last one of them. And I, this is the reason why. Today, like in the beginning of the video, get yourself free courses. There's some Craigslist courses there. Go ahead, apply yourself, and you can literally make money tonight. Now, let's talk about making money online. You need a website. You need a presence. You need some kind of money-generating device such as YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. You need something like that, whereas you can start hustling locally damn near instantaneously. Whereas online, hustling takes prep. And I'll tell you, this YouTube channel, I did not make a single penny for six months. And full disclosure, I didn't have a job. I was doing this full time, but I had money in the bank. I had savings to do this on. That is why I could do hard work for six months. Now, if you have a job, especially if you have a job, you need to start off with the part time hustle. Craigslist, uh, eBay, Amazon, maybe, you know, I'm just saying. But ideally, pick a physical product, and I'll get into that in a minute, and sell locally because let's just say, you're going to sell iPhone cases, right? Or you're going to try to sell a high intellectual property, high complex stuff like my stuff, like online courses, books. A book could be free, but it's still going to take three to 14 hours to consume. There's still an opportunity cost there. You got to think about that. So before you get off into that, start hustling where you are with what you have and build on that. And you get these iPhone cases, right? And they're fifty dollars for the bundle. You sell them for five or six bucks. Then you just sell them, and you can sell them for five, six dollars. You buy fifty for a dollar. That's a fifty dollar commitment. Make that commitment and sell those cases and learn from the experiences. Another reason that you should start locally is it's hard for people to stay motivated when there's no appreciable results. Whereas if you're selling some locally, like I have a friend who was selling cookies. First few times, she didn't sell that many cookies. She went to the wrong place, and I kept going, kept going. Then she went to this place, and she's like, oh, my God, I made $700 today because she stuck with it. Whereas on this online thing, you can build websites. You can build Facebook pages. You can build Facebook groups. And a year later, you've made no money. That is very demoralizing for most people. So start selling locally. Learn those lessons from a local level then they will matriculate to your online business. That's what I did. I was a local guy. I sold for 12 years locally. Uh, well, I had a physical operation and I did a heavy online presence, but I still knew how to close a deal when someone walked through the door. I can't underestimate how important it is to learn how to sell. It's going to help you the rest of your life. I get many people who want to be life coaches, public speakers, those are worthy pursuits. They really are, but they take time to realize. What I want you to do, if you want to learn how to sell online, is to start with a physical product, something you can sink your teeth into, because let's say you're selling iPhone cases, right? Someone's looking for an iPhone case. Does it fit the phone? Do they like it? The decision-making process is much smaller for an iPhone case, a piece of clothing, a t-shirt or something. But when you start selling intellectual property, when you start selling courses, life coaching is intellectual property, then the decision-making matrix just gets huge. And 
the less experience you have in dealing with that decision-making matrix, the more problems you're going to have, the quicker you're going to burn out. So start with a physical product. It'll be simple. It'll be easier. I should say simpler or easier than selling a high concept product such as intellectual property thing as an online course or an ebook. Yes, an ebook because many people write books, but many people don't sell a lot of books. That's another high level intellectual pursuit because the person who buys your book, whether it's free or not, has to consume it. Consuming the book is three to 12 or 16 hours of their life. So there's a huge opportunity cost for them to consume your book, for them to consume your course. Once again, the decision-making matrix just goes crazy. So start with a physical product. When you start locally, it'll be easier to sell iPhone cases if you're a student, I should say, because people change their iPhone cases like accessories. They may have a Monday case. They may have a Tuesday case. Now, if you're past 40 or 50 years old, this doesn't make any sense to you. If you're under 20, then you know, or you might even be a person who's doing this. And once again, that brings me to my next part. Now, you've discovered your marketplace. You know what you're going to sell. You know who you're going to sell it to. You even know how much money that they may potentially spend. You need to spend as much time selling as possible. What is selling? Selling is, this is my product, would you buy it? That's selling. <laughs> that's, the, that's the rudimentary, that's the ground floor of that stuff. And why would you do that? The more you sell, the more that you find out what's wrong with your product, the more you find out what people will pay. Essentially, you create a huge feedback loop. You get more information. Many people are really afraid of selling. They're scared shitless of selling. They're like, oh, you want me to sell something? I don't want to sell. I'm not a salesperson. Yes, you are if you're starting a business. So give you some ratios. If you have a product and you have a service, and once again, going back to starting local, you need to spend 70 to 80% of your time selling. Why? Because this is going to give you information for marketing. This is going to give you information for pricing. See, selling helps you solve a lot of problems that your business may have. The more problems that you solve, the more money that you make. Research your marketplace. Let's go back to the iPhone cases. If you're 30, 40, 50, you might have a nice iPhone case that you'll keep, or you might buy two a year. But if you're like 20 and below, and maybe 25 and below, you may have a drawer full of iPhone cases. Now, where am I going with this? Once again, part of researching your market is to know what your market is. Many people make the mistake of trying to sell something to people they don't know, they don't understand, they don't speak the language. When you research your marketplace, one of the first things you have to ask yourself is, who is going to buy this product? Why would they buy this product? Now, those are two questions that many people never ask themselves, and sometimes they spend hundreds of dollars to millions of dollars without asking those questions and validating the market. I'm not kidding you. This is how common an issue it is. So you're going to spend a lot of time researching your market. Let's go with life coaching. A lot of people want to be life coaches. A lot of people want to do that stuff. Here's a question for you. Would you buy your life coaching services? If you pause, if you pause, that's a problem. And that's an issue because if you're not confident, why would someone else be? Because once again, intellectual high concept products and services have a different selling funnel, a different marketing process, a different selling process than physical products. But they all have the same thing in common in terms of knowing who the customer is, knowing what the marketplace is, knowing what people need. I do a lot of how to make money videos, how to start a business videos, and my products and services are geared in that realm. Why? Sure, I'll, I'll tell you my trade secret. Jobs as we know it are disappearing. More than likely, that's why you're watching this video. Because either you hate your job, you're not making enough money, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And some of you have bachelor's degrees, some of you even have graduate degrees, and you're just not making enough scratch. Why? The marketplace keeps changing. So 
I know exponentially every year my pool of potential customers just gets larger and larger and larger because many people will be forced to start their own business. I think you should make your first $1,000 offline before you spend any money with a website or any of this other stuff. And I know you're going like, Lyndon, that just doesn't make any sense. If I want to sell online, shouldn't I have these things? This is the reason I want you to make your first thousand dollars. Having an online business has cost. The, usually the more successful that your online business is, the higher the cost. You'll see someone on Facebook, hey, I made a hundred thousand dollars this month and they're not lying, but they don't tell you about the $25,000 in Facebook ads. They don't tell you about the 70 grand that went to joint venture partners. So they made $5,000. They don't tell you that because many people do that to build a list. They'll spend a hundred grand, 200 grand, 300 grand, or a million to build a list to sell to later. But if you're just starting, you can't play that game. So don't compare yourselves to unicorns. Make your first thousand dollars offline. Then what? Now you have a financial war chest to fund your online activities. You have money to buy the domain name. You have money to buy traffic if you want to. You have money for more products. Essentially, you're in a better situation to make money online. And you also have this. You have the belief in yourself that you can sell a product or service because you have the cold hard cash to prove it. This is going to sound somewhat counterintuitive or even like I'm going against what I just told you. I want you to think large. When I say large, I don't want you to think a few hundred bucks a month. I don't want you to think a few thousand a month. I want you to think hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars per month, not year per, per month. Now, why do I want you to think this large? Once you start reverse engineering how to make money selling products, you may find out, let's go back to life coaching. You only can life coach so many people at one time. So you're, you're, you're successful with life coaching. You're making money. You're paying your mortgage. You're paying bills. You're putting food in your kid's mouth from life coaching. And then you hit that, that ceiling. You hit that ceiling. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because you've built a business that's not scalable. Now, when you think large and you reverse engineer the sales process, the profit process, how much money you can make, then you realize that, hey, I can't make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month with life coaching, or I can't make millions of dollars per month with life coaching, but I can with an iPhone case because I can create a process that doesn't have to have me. I go to China or maybe to Thailand. I have the cases made for pennies on the dollars. I have a distributor and all the stuff is automated and I'm selling thousands of iPhone cases per month making hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions. See, that's how you make a lot of money. Systems and processes, not just hard work. Hard work's part of it, but when you think large, it forces you to think of how you can make this thing happen, how you can pull it off. And it forces you to think five years in advance, 10 years in advance. So think as large as you can, not a few hundred bucks a month, not a few thousand dollars a month, but hundreds of thousands and millions. And that's going to help you formulate and create a business that can reach those goals. Here's a little secret. The difference between running a company that makes a few, makes say 300,000 a year and the difference between running a company that makes 3 million a year is structure, process, and intent. There are many of you who've built a business that's making you six figures and you're stuck but you never built your business to make seven figures. You never built your business to make eight. And that's why it doesn't do that. Something else that you're going to do, and it's going to sound counterintuitive. You want to hire as fast as humanly possible, even with your hustle, even with your offline business. And this is why. The faster that you have to hire someone, the faster you have to put in place processes to instruct your employee, which means it's going to force you to grow up. It's going to force you to act a certain way with your business, because if you don't, you're going to have problems.
a lot of problems. Hiring is a signal that your business is growing. Hiring is a signal that you are serious about your business. There are many people, solopreneurs, I don't want to hire anybody. I don't want to manage anybody. It's all well and good. But success dictates responsibility. It's unavoidable. You ever notice that a lot of people with, who get a lot of money, like just take people who win the lottery. All of a sudden, they have all of this money and all of a sudden they have all this responsibility. Should I spend it wisely? Should I give it to my kids? Success dictates responsibility. So the more successful that you are, the more responsible you will be. And that's the reason a lot of you are not successful because you don't want the responsibility. It's not that you're not talented enough. It's not that you're not, you're not smart enough. You even work hard. It's just you don't want to be responsible for other people. And that's just part of the package of making a ton of money. That's just it. So hire someone, even part-time, even if they make more money than you. Yes, I know that's kind of crazy, but yes, because the thing is, let's give you an example. Let's say you are working a full-time job, right? And you've got this hustle that does $2,000 a month. You've got capital and profit to spend $500 to $1,000 a month on an employee. Now, I know you're going like, whoa, that's less money for me. No, you're thinking like an employee. That's actually more money for you, more time, because what you can do is assign an employee all the stuff that you don't want to do or stuff that you're not good at, and then you can focus on the things that you're good at and sometimes triple or quadruple how much money you're making because now you're freed up. So go ahead and hire someone. In every business I've had except for the publishing company, I've had employees within the first six months, every business, and maybe I'm not the smartest knife in the drawer, but I haven't had a job since 2000. I'm going to introduce a concept to you called hustle before you spend. I am looking to get this really expensive power rack, right? And instead of just slapping it on a credit card, and this is a business lesson, I am thought, how can I hustle that money up inside my business? You can hustle inside your business. You can offer a promotion. You can offer a sale or something like that. Let's say you're just starting and you've got five thousand dollars in the bank right my advice to you would be to generate as much money as you possibly can without spending any money in a form of pre-sales beta sales or you know a kickstarter essentially it's like hey if you pay us now you get this great deal later there's a lot of ways that you can pre-sell your products i'll tell you something that i did which <laughs> could have went really really bad I had a client that wanted some Herman Miller Aeron chairs. This is years and years and years ago. I didn't have access to Herman Miller Aeron chairs, but I wanted to deal. So this is what I did. I went to the Herman Miller dealership and I said, hey, I'm looking for 30 chairs. What's your best deal you can give me if I buy them all at once? And the guy was like, ah, oh, well, you know, the price is the price and this is what it is, this is what it is. So I'm leaving and then this other guy's like, Psst. And I'm looking around like, what, 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 what? And it's the guy from the warehouse. He said, you want 30 chairs, 350, and I can get them. But you got to pay me in cash. You got to pay me all at once. And you got to come at 2 a.m. And I'm like, yo, 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 is this some crazy stuff? He said, no, 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 this is what we do. It's just he wasn't going to do it for you, if you know what I mean. Okay, okay, cool. So I go back to the client and I said, look, I can get you those Herman Miller, Herman Miller and run chairs. And I can get them for you really fast. But this is the thing, that part of the deal, you got to pay in full right now. And the lady was like, you saying I got to write you a check out right now? The Herman Miller and Aaron's list for 1200 bucks, right? She said, yes, we've looked. That's pretty much what it is. I can get them for you for $900 and have them delivered first. But you got to pay for all of them now. What are you going to do? And I just sat back and waited and she got on the phone and she said, we want these chairs. So I left with a check, went to the bank, cashed the check, went to talk to the dude in the warehouse, met him with my guys at the truck, picked up the truck, took the chairs to the site, and the deal was done. 
So what I'm saying is you can make promises of great value and get paid before you deliver. I've done it several times and so can you. So hustle before you spend. Another way to start a profitable online business is to network your ass off. Whether you're selling stuff offline, whether you're selling stuff online, relationships matter and they matter greatly. Whatever product or service you're selling, look for folks who are selling the same items and start to talk to them. And you're going to like, whoa, you want me to talk to my competition? Look, they're in the same boat as you are and they have the same problems as you do. You can often get inventory, assistance, or even a sale by just opening up your mouth and saying, hey, I do X, Y, and Z. I did a lot of side deals in the storage auction business. Someone would say, hey, gee, I bought this unit. It's a 10 by 30, but I only want X, Y, and Z. If you give me this, you can have the whole unit. Of course, I was a volume seller. I did a lot of partnerships like that because people knew that I had the infrastructure. I had guys, I had trucks. So there's a lot of deals that can be made. You can go through your network and see what's going on and become a resource to people, quote, who are your competition. There's a lot of ways you can slice this up, but any way you look at it, network, go to events, talk to people, put yourself out there. The more of that you do, the more opportunities that will come your way. Hands down, this will be the most important aspect. Getting started. There's a lot of people who will go through this video, they'll look at all the steps, they'll take notes, they'll do all of that stuff, and they will not get started. That is the most important thing because on this journey of creating a business online and offline, you got to get started. You have to put yourself out there. Now, what is getting started? Making your first sale, going out and making a small commitment. Say you want to sell, let's go back to iPhone cases, and you can go to the warehouse district and get 50 for $50. That's a dollar a case. That's a small investment. You can flip them for five bucks. Go buy the case and force yourself to sell each one. And then when you sell the iPhone cases, ask people questions. This is hands down one of the most horrible things that people do when they start businesses. They'll make a sale and they'll leave somebody that just paid them money alone. You should say, look, psst, you know what? How would you like to get that iPhone case for free? Free? All right, I'm listening. Just here's my card and let your friends know. And if there's something they're looking for, if I can get it, I'll get it. This is called referral-based business. Now, I get a lot of referrals here on this YouTube channel. Tons of people say it. It's like, hey, man, I started watching you. I recommended you to 10 of my friends. I recommended you to 20 of my friends. I get people leaving those kind of comments and doing that. And I'm really thankful because it makes the growth of this channel and the growth of my business exponential because I got one person that comes into the funnel, but I get 10. So start working the referral angle, start working all of these wonderful opportunities that you have when you have one person who is giving you some money. So those are the 10 steps to starting an online business. Not exactly what you thought, because I know you thought it was going to be full of websites or you should sell this product or you should do Amazon FBA. No, 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 no. See, this is the thing. If you never get started, you never expose yourself, you never make these micro commitments, you never really put yourself out there, you're never going to make any money. Because once you go through the out there hustling in the physical world, and then you start putting stuff online, your knowledge base will be richer, your experience will be richer, and you'll be more effective. You'll be able to sell more, make more money. You will be working your ass off. Yes, you will. But as someone said, the best way to learn about business is actually to be in business. It's simple, it sounds idiotic, it sounds crazy, but you will. When I was in the storage auction business, I was a just a seller, right? And I did, I loathed to sell stuff for other people. But I had a lot of deals where people would come in and say, look, I'm closing down my store. I'm closing down my warehouse. Could you sell the stuff for me? Um, they'd take me to the warehouse and essentially I would list stuff, sell stuff and, and you know bring people into my sales funnel and made a lot of money without any heavy lifting, without 
really doing much except being a resource. I'll tell you something else that happened to me. And this happened when I first got into the office furniture business. There's this guy. He's probably not in the business anymore because, man, this is like 17 years ago, 18 years ago, something like that. His name is Richard Strickland. And I remember this is the first time that someone ever was this honorable, over the top, just came through. Richard bought office. He and his wife, she's a real nice lady. They bought all of the furniture in the office building because I was in that world. So I had found a deal and he was in the office and I said, well, these people are looking to sell 20 floors of furniture. Now everybody can't handle 20 floors of of furniture and if you ever rented space one of the reasons that office furniture is still in the space is it's often very expensive to remove it you just can't move office furniture in the class a building in the middle of the day you usually have to do it in the middle of the night or after hours which is overtime so it's really expensive well richard said okay i gave him the name i gave him the contact six months later i got a big ass check <laughs> i was like whoa never in my life had that happened before but once again, just taking steps, getting started, putting yourself out there, you may run into your Richard Strickland in the world. You may run into it, but the longer that you just stay in that, mm, I may start something that may not mode, you're never going to realize these opportunities and results. All right, so if you made it to the end of the video, you're special because most people don't. So I've got something for you. As you saw in the beginning of the video, there was a number, but I don't want you to call that number. I want you to call this number. I'm doing something special for the folks who make it to the end of the video. It's a different consultation. It's a different level of service. So what I want you to do is call that number, leave your name, location, and tell me about your business aspirations, what you're trying to do, where you are in business, or you might be a business owner and you may want to need some help. Once again, call that number, leave your name, and what you're trying to accomplish. Be really, really specific. Like, hey, Glendon, I saw your video. That's really nice. Call me back. That's not specific, and a lot of times I don't call them back because it's this big, huge rabbit hole. But I'll let my assistant call those folks back, or she'll text them. But do that, and we'll see what we can do about you being successful. Now, here's a few things. For those of you who are in this space, you don't know what you want to do. You have no products. You have no service. Let's do it like this. Just go ahead and go below the video and there's offers. And the first thing is get the free stuff. As you saw in the beginning of the video, 14 free courses. You can hustle on Craigslist. Just have it. Go ahead and get that stuff. And then after you've tried your hand at hustling, come back to the channel and I will have some other stuff for folks who because it's, it's in development right now. I'm doing what's called 30 days to $2,500, the millionaire version. Essentially, it is a business formation boot camp that is an offshoot of something I did two years ago that has worked out really well. I'm starting to get a lot of people who are saying, hey, I took that course two years ago. I have a business. I'm at this point. I'm stuck. Could you help me? So I want to get some more of that action. So that's the reason I'm redoing the course, making it better. Matter of fact, as I just do this, you call that number and you text that number and I'll send you a special link that will only be good for 24 hours because I don't know when you're going to see this video. Just put, I want the 30 days to $2,500 millionaire version special because I saw it on the video and I'll text you a link and that link's only going to be good for 24 hours. I'm just not going to have this thing out and it's going to be an awesome deal for you because Depending upon when you see this video, it may be done. I could still be in the beginning because it's going to kick off February 15th. That's when I'm going to start with it. So if you want the pre-roll, I mean the pre-special or the pre-sale, go ahead and make that call and I'll send you a link. So with that, if you like this information, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and be sure to get down, go below the video. There's a lot of cool stuff down there and I do special webinars. So you might want to get on that list. All right. This is Glendon, and I'll see you in the next episode.